GPT-5. Now it's like talking to an expert. Python has become the primary, the dominant language for the machine learning community. We're going to try something that, as far as we know, no tech company has done before. Google has been at the forefront of Gemini many of those better than any GPT other model. GPT-4 is incredibly advanced. More than any other so O1 is the smartest one to announce. To Gemini 2.0 enables new kinds. To deliver frontier intelligence. Python is one of the most popular languages out there. Welcome to the complete Python mastery course. Learn Python. 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 Coding has changed a lot in the past few years and naturally, so has how you should learn it. If I was learning Python again completely from scratch, I would do a lot of things differently. Hi, I'm Aman Saurabh, alumnus of IT Delhi and I welcome you all to this video where we'll learn about Python. Now, the absolute first thing that I would do before I start learning any of the Python features or syntax is actually a bit of research about the language. I would want to understand what it's good at and what I can actually do with it and then try to set myself a goal for why I want to learn Python as opposed to a different programming language. This way, I will know that Python is actually the right choice for me. It is worth me spending time learning it and I can work towards finishing something like an application or some type of script. When you are programming, it can be really difficult, especially when you are just starting out. A lot of people switch between languages and don't really know where they are going, so it's really important to set the direction correctly. Make sure this is the language that you want to learn and give yourself some kind of goal to work towards so that you know why you're doing all of this work. Now, after I was certain that Python is the language that I want to learn, the next thing I would try to do is make sure I get my machine set up for Python development and learn about the different environments and tools that I need to use to actually start writing Python code. This step shouldn't take very long and a lot of people skip it or they don't get the right type of guide. This means that they get into a tutorial and they get immediately overwhelmed because they don't even have Python on their machine and they don't know how to run the code or execute it or they don't know what a code editor or IDE is. So you want to be looking for videos or at least articles or lessons online that share with you that kind of step zero where you can get everything set up and feel comfortable even before you start diving into the code. Now that I've got my machine set up, what I'll be focusing on is mastering the basics. I'm going to give you an entire list of topics that you should master and after that, I'll explain exactly why you should learn these, especially when you're just starting out. The topics in order would be data types, operators, variables, conditions, conditionals, so this is like if, else and elif statements, loops, so for loops, while loops, looping over different objects, then I would focus on things like lists, dictionaries, sets, the main kind of Python data structures. After that, I would look at functions. Now, I know that sounds like a lot of stuff, but this is going to cover almost 80% of all you're ever really going to need to know. If you can understand all of these things, even if you're not a master at them yet, it's really going to help you progress quite quickly in your programming journey. So that's great. We have all of this long list of things to focus on, how do you actually learn those? Well, my personal recommendation, at least when you're right at the beginning, is to learn these from videos. The reason why I like watching video courses is because at this point, you don't even know what you don't know. There are going to be a lot of things that you would not know where to look up or find articles on. But if you can find a good educational resource like a YouTube series online and it has a good instructor, they're going to be filling you with a lot of different pieces of information and sharing a bunch of nuggets that you would not get if you were trying to learn all of these topics independently or trying to figure it out by yourself. So what I would do now is actually commit the first day or two of my learning going through a bunch of different resources. I would recommend YouTube tutorial series or things like Udemy course. I would watch the first few minutes of one of those lessons that they have there. I would make sure that the teacher makes sense to me and I have confidence that this series will be good. There are tons of tutorials online, tons of amazing instructors. Obviously, we teach a lot of Python on this channel, I am biased, 
but I think our videos are really good. Again, commit a little bit of time upfront, find the best resource you think at the current time is going to help you learn and then commit to that for the next few hours to master these basics. Just one final thing here. If you're following along with video tutorials, I highly recommend replicating everything that you see the instructor does on their computer. When I was learning, what was really effective for me was to have a video on one screen or part of my screen and my code editor on the other. I would constantly pause the video, type things out try them on my own and try to predict what the instructor would say next. It's really important that you're fully engaged and actually interacting with the video rather than simply watching them without doing anything. You want to be coding alongside them, pausing and taking your time. Meaning a video that's 15 to 20 minutes long might actually take you an hour to get through and that's totally fine. But that's the best way to absorb information. Now, at this point, I know a lot of you guys are thinking that hasn't AI changed things? Shouldn't I be using AI to learn? And the answer is yes. And I'm going to talk about that in one second. But something else that AI has impacted is the ability to land a job in 2025 and beyond. So after I've gone through a bunch of these videos and kind of gotten theory out of the way, what I will be focusing on is practicing as much as possible and really making all of these basic concepts until they become memorized and until I understand them quite well. Now, you don't need to memorize all of those syntax per se, but you do need to know how things work and be able to use them. So how would I do that in 2025? Well, what I would really heavily lean on is AI and I would get AI to generate a ton of practice questions for me. One of the biggest issues when you are trying to practice programming is trying to find a way to do that in small bits or get a bunch of great practice questions to go through. Courses can help you with that and there are some great resources online, but I would simply really be going to chat GPT and say things like, hey, I struggle with these certain areas and I want to do a lot of practice. Can you give me some small practice questions in Python? For small questions like this, it's very likely that you generate good questions and it can also verify the answers for you. Anything more than that? Probably not. It can make mistakes, but at least for the basics, it can generate hundreds of different problems for you and you can do a ton until you feel really comfortable with the basic Python syntax. Now, after that, and after I'd gone through a ton of different practice questions, what I would focus on is walking through beginner projects. It's one of the ways to get the basics down it's another thing to understand how to architect software, even if it's a small program, you know, 50 lines of code, 100 lines of code, and how to take all of that theoretical knowledge and all of this syntax and combine it together into something larger. For this, what I would do is go and find YouTube videos that have complete project walkthroughs. I would follow along a tutorial like that and try my best to pause the video and attempt certain portions of the code on my own. And then a few days later, go back to that same video and try to code out much larger portions of the project myself before referencing back to it. Now, at this point, I'd really feel comfortable with basic programming, even creating some small projects and hopefully start to build my confidence a bit. This is when I'd get into object-oriented programming. I wouldn't try to rush this and try to learn it too early, but once I go through all of that coding with the basic features, object-oriented programming is the natural next step. So at this point, I have learned object-oriented programming, I know the core features in Python, and now there's some advanced stuff to learn there. But at this point, I'd focus on trying to do something cool and interesting. Personally, what I would try to do is make a game using Python with a module like Pygame and try to do things like sending an email or messaging or messing with the OS module. I'd really want to focus on actually putting my Python skills into practice and trying to make something cool and interesting. I think that's super important. So I'd recommend at this stage to pick something like a game and make it in Python. And that's kind of a next step before you move forward. Once I have built something cool like a game in Python, what I would go into next is web development with Python. And this is where Python really shines. It's where you can build really cool stuff and really cool applications. Even if you don't want to be a web developer, it is assumed in a lot of roles that you have at least some basic understanding of these concepts. So that's where I would go next. Same thing, I have a list here, so I'm going to read a few topics that you should really focus on. Some of them are Python specific, some of them are not. The first thing I would focus on is learning about HTTP methods and just the basics of how the internet actually works 
how you serve a web page, how you view a page and how you interact with it using things like requests. Then I would look at the request module. This is a module which you can install in Python that allows you to send various requests to things like APIs or other websites. After that, I would try to build a really simple website using a module like Flask. This is a really simple way that you can get a website up and running in just a few minutes. After that, if I was interested in web development, I would move on and learn something like Django. Again, I wouldn't spend a lot of time here, but I would want to be familiar with it and have used it before. And then lastly, I might just dabble into something like Fast API just to get a sense of these different Python frameworks, all of which you can use to build web websites and APIs. So that's it. I would learn Python web development and then I would move into some advanced Python features. The features that I would focus on specifically are decorators, generators, context managers, meta classes and dunder methods. You don't really need to understand these super well to be good at Python but it is helpful to really increase your comprehension of the language especially when you're starting to work on a lot of different frameworks or modules where these features might be built in but you don't directly touch them. So I would learn these different features. It shouldn't take you that long to get the hang of them and at this point you'll know more about Python language as a whole. You'll have some understanding of the advanced things that happen behind the scene and that's really where most of you can stop when it actually comes to mastering Python. After that, what's really next is getting into the specific niche and using Python for, well, what it's used for, building various applications. So I have a long list of apps or different areas that you can get into once you've mastered all of these topics. Let me go through all of them. We have machine learning, we have AI, we have interacting with things like LLMs, we have data science, we have backend developers, and then we have things like DevOps engineering, doing automation, working with robotics, integrating Raspberry Pi, and the list goes on and on. Really, at this point, it's about learning the specific tools and modules that actually allow you to make cool stuff with Python, and then getting good at these specific frameworks or modules. Regardless, that will wrap up this video. That's how I would do it if I were starting over. If you have different ideas, leave them in the comments down below. And with that said, I hope you enjoyed the video.